Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name is Matt. Yes, I know it's been a while since I've created any new content, but I'm back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Palo Alto Network's user ID feature on the next generation firewall using VMware Workstation. So in my earlier Palo Alto firewall lab using VMware Workstation video, I showed you guys how to set up a next generation firewall with basic connectivity along with internet access. If you haven't watched that video yet, make sure you do it as this is a prerequisite before attempting this lab. This lab uses the same foundations, however, as I create more videos, I will be adding more advanced features along the way. Palo Alto Network's user ID technology's purpose is to identify all users on the network by usernames and user groups, and in turn associate IP addresses with usernames. This improves visibility of application usage based on users rather than just their IP addresses. Usernames and groups can be tied to security policies that ensure users can only have access to applications that are needed for them to perform their day-to-day -day tasks and applications that ha have been sanctioned by their organization. So there are different ways to collect and map user information. For example, we could use the PanOS integrated user ID agent that runs on the firewall or we could use the Windows-based user ID agent that runs on the domain member, which collects IP addresses to username information, which is sent to the firewall. Both the Windows-based and PanOS integrated agent perform the same basic task, but they use different communication protocols suited them to different environments. For a deeper dive into the user ID technology, take a look at the PanOS administrator guide. I'll leave the link down in the description. In this user ID lab, I'm going to be covering the Windows based agent, which is a server monitoring mapping method. As you can see in the topology diagram, a new DC security zone has been created. This is where the Active Directory server will reside. Once the next generation firewall is configured with the lab objectives, the Windows client will be able to communicate from the user zone to the DC zone. The user ID Windows agent will collect IP addresses to username information and send it on to the firewall. These are the lab prerequisites. So we need a Windows 2016 server up and running in VMware Workstation with Active Directory installed. The client machine needs to have access to the internet. A test domain account is required for the next generation firewall to communicate with the LDAP server. A test service account is required for the Windows user ID agent. Now let's go through the lab objectives. So an additional virtual network needs to be created in the VMware network editor. Uh, this is for the new DC security zone. The client and server will need to be on separate security zones using different subnets. The Windows client needs to be successfully joined to the Windows domain. User ID will need to be enabled on the source DC and user zone only, not enabled on the untrusted zones. Configure an LDAP server profile to define how the firewall communicates with the LDAP server. Download and install the Windows user ID agent MSI from support.paloaltonetworks.com. Configure Active Directory group mappings to be used by user ID. Configure and verify the user ID agent connectivity. Configure a security policy action based on the source user or group. Verify user traffic traversing the firewall by viewing the firewall logs. Okay, so let's begin by opening the VMware editor. So if you click on the Windows button and then just type in editor and then we need to uh, run this as, as administrator, click yes. And what we're going to be doing is adding a new network. So this is going to be virtual network eight. Click OK. So I'm not going to be using DHCP, so I'm going to uncheck that. But what I'm going to do is assign a new subnet. Uh, looking at the diagram, it was 10.4.4.0 on a slash 24 subnet and then click apply and then OK. Now the next thing we need to do is go into uh, VMware Workstation itself 
um, and um, assign the new virtual network um, to the firewalls. So uh, let's um, click on the first firewall and we're going to go into settings and then as you can see um, we have got um, the last network I think it's for the HA is VMnet 7 so we're just going to add a new network in here so we're going to click on network adapter we're going to uh, assign the uh, new VMnet 8 to the firewall there and then click OK and then let's do the same on firewall 2 uh, go to add network adapter finish custom specific virtual network and then VMnet 8 and then click OK now if, I don't know if you uh, remember but if you watched my uh, previous video you know that in order for the Palo Alto to boot up, um, we need to make sure that the uh, virtual uh, adapter or virtual device is the right type. Um, so we need to go and edit the VMX file. So you need to go where your um, virtual machines are um, stored. Now mine's in on, on this PC, documents, virtual machines, and then I'm going to go into the into the first firewall, and I'm looking for the VMX file. Now I've got uh, Notepad++ installed, so I'm going to edit it with that. So what we're looking for is the new um, Ethernet 8 interface, um, which should be in here. Have to scroll through it and take a look. So we're looking for Ethernet. So it's going to be Ethernet seven, isn't it, on here? So seven. So as you can see, there you go. Ethernet seven. Um, it's assigned to VMnet eight. Now we need to make sure that the um, the virtual device like Ethernet 4 is set to VMX Net 3. So that's the, the virtual device type. So we need to copy that and then we need to edit this one and then paste um, and then just save that. And then that's done. And then we need to do the second one. So if we go to the, the to the passive firewall, and then look for the uh, VMX file again, and we're going to edit that. So it was down at the bottom. So as you can see, Ethernet seven, which is assigned to VMnet eight. So we're going to change that E1000 virtual device to VMX Net three, and then hit hit save. And that's done. So we should be able to boot those files up with no problems now. So I'll do that. So let's um, let's power on this one, the primary first, and then we'll power on the passive. So I'll let those boot up and uh, get back to you in a minute. Okay, so both the firewalls have successfully booted up, so we can log in now to complete the configuration. And we can move on with the lab objectives. So let's go into network and we're going to go into zones. And what we're going to do is add the new DC or data center zone. So it's going to be called DC. And we're going to change that to a layer three. We're going to enable user identification, and we're going to click OK. I'm going to make a few changes to the to the name of the other zones, um, 
So outside I'm going to change to untrust. And the inside is going to be users. And then I'm just going to leave DMZ. Um, and you've got to make sure, so we've got, yeah, enable user ID on there. And don't forget to do it on, um, on the users zone as well. And then we need to go into interfaces. And so then we can go to Ethernet 1 slash 7. This is where the VM net 8 has been assigned to. You're going to change the interface type to layer 3. And we're going to assign it to virtual router 1, so VR1. And security zone for this interface is going to be DC. Then click on IPv4 to add the IP address, which is 10.4.4.2. 254/24 uh, and then click on advanced and we're going to assign an existing management profile so that we can ping from the Windows server just to test connectivity to the interface and that's, click OK so that's that done so if we commit those changes and then once this is done we should see the interface come up and the link state will turn to green and then we can uh, move on to the uh, Windows 2016 server and check connectivity. So inside VMware Workstation, we're gonna just uh, check the settings are on the um, server. So we're gonna go into settings. I'm just gonna confirm that the uh, network adapter has been assigned to VMnet 8, which it has. Um, so just gotta make sure that's correct. So the Active Directory server is going to be um, within the data center zone or the dc zone and the windows 10 client or whatever client you're using should be in the user zone um, what we're going to do now is just do a quick uh, ping test um, just to confirm we've got connectivity to the firewall so let's just ping 10.4.4.254 and there we go that's good so that means our configuration so far um, is good and we are happy we can now uh, go back to the firewall and configure a, um, a simple security policy to allow east-west traffic uh, between the user zone and the DC zone and from a DC zone to the to the user zone so let's go and do that now okay so we're back at the firewall dashboard um, what we're going to do now is create a simple policy. So under the policies tab, security, uh, click add. Um, we're just going to call this uh, East West. Um, the source, I'm going to do this uh, by directional. Um, so ultimately I'm going to put um, users and DC and then destination DC and users this is going to allow traffic to flow between the zones um, in either direction so users dc and dc users um, application any and i'm going to put this at any as well um, this is just going to allow us to do the testing with the user id um, in future videos i'm going to um, kind of explore how to um, make the security policies a lot more um, restrictive and only and so that we don't have permissive rules in the in the rule base um, so for the time being we're just going to leave that at like that and then I'm going to change the name of this this is going to be um, I'm just going to call this uh, internet um, internet traffic and then the source, we're going to have to add the DC to this as well. Um, and also we're going to need to change the uh, NAT rule as well, um, because the NAT rule won't know anything about the um, DC. So we're going to assign the DC to the source zone in the existing NAT policy. Uh, this this rule was done in the uh, original lab so uh, if you want to know how to set that up then um, make sure you watch that video um, so just go back to the security policies so we've got 
internet traffic. So this is going to allow uh, traffic out from the DC and user zone to the untrust zone. Uh, any application at the moment, you know, application default in this case. East-West traffic, this is going to allow user to data center to data center user traffic. Um, as I said, very permissive. Um, but we can revisit this in a later lab. Under the uh, interzone default, um, you can see that the, there isn't any login turned on. Um, so what you need to do is just highlight the rule and then click on override down the bottom here and go into actions and then just tick the log at session end. This will now log any denied traffic, um, which you can be able to see in the monitor, tra um, in the monitor tab. Uh, and then when, once you've done that, click commit and then we can wait for that to um, uh, to finish and then we can pop back to the uh, um, VMware workstation and we're going to go and check uh, the Windows 10 client um, settings and just confirm um, that it's set up properly and if we look at the network adapter um, it's still assigned to the original um, what was the inside zone, which is now the user zone, so VMNet3. So as long as it's set up to VM, VMNet3 and that's assigned to user zone, um, that's correct. Uh, click OK. So what we're going to do now is do a quick test uh, from the um, Windows 10 client uh, and just make sure that we can ping um, the new Windows 2016 server on the on the DC zone, uh, it should have an IP of 4.4.100, which it has. So that's good. So that's working. And then if we were to uh, flick over to the Windows Server 2016 and do the same the other way, we can check the um, the firewall rule um, is allowing traffic in both directions. So we're going to ping uh, 10.0. Uh, 3.3.10 uh, I thought it was 3.3.10 let me just confirm that Windows 10 so let's do IP config IP config forward slash all uh, 3.3.10 so it must have a Windows firewall on here so let's just turn that off it is a lab environment after all Windows Firewall. Um, click on that, and yeah, you can see. Let's turn turn off. Let's just turn that off. Don't need that in the lab environment. So let's try that test again. Go back to Windows Server 2016, and then we'll just try that ping test again. And there we go. So. Let's go back over to the firewall and we can take a look at the logs and we should see traffic. Um, so we got uh, users to untrust, so that's going out to the internet. Uh, we got DC to DC, so you've got a, it looks like a broadcast there. DC to users, um, and let's just filter this down. So we've got DC to users, so if you click on any one of these um, zones it, it will build a filter a log filter in here and then it can filter on the traffic so you can see we've got uh, DC to users there's the ping we take that out and then hit return it should then now we want uh, from users to DC and there you go you can see the ping going in the other direction so that's all working the way I expected to um, the next thing we can do is um, start configuring uh, the LDAP server profile uh, and start um, configuring user ID um, and testing. So uh, let's get on with that now. Okay, so before we uh, move on to the um, LDAP and user ID configuration, we need to make sure that the Windows 10 client has um, joined it to the uh, Windows domain. So let's go and check the IP details out first. So I'm just going to click on this icon down here and go to network and internet settings. And then I'm going to click on ethernet and then change adapt adapter options. Right click on, on ethernet zero and then properties. Then uh, go into um, TCP IPv4 
um, and just confirm that your domain controller or your Windows uh, 2016 server uh, IP is, is populated in here um, and then click OK. Uh, we've already verified connectivity across the firewall so it shouldn't be a problem. And then I'm going to go on to uh, File Explorer and this PC properties and then we're going to go in and change the domain name from the work group there um, and we're going to click on domain and then I'm going to be putting in MB tech um, dot local and then click OK and, and that's a good sign we've got an authentication box so just going to authenticate and then click OK so there we go so the client has now successfully joined the uh, domain click OK and we're going to need to restart for the changes to take effect so let's do that now so we can now move on um, to the LDAP and um, user ID configuration so um, let's move on to that now so going back to the lab prerequisites, um, we need to make sure we've got the right account set up um, for the next generation firewall to communicate with the LDAP server and also for the Windows user ID agent to run as a service. So if I go to uh, Server Manager, Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers, and in the Manage Service Accounts uh, folder, you can see I've got an account called PanFW Admin. I actually just use this one account to do both of these tasks. So I'm just going to show you how I've got um, this account set up uh, and which groups it's a member of. So you need to take a note of this. So this account is a member of the administrators, distributed com, domain users, event log readers, and server operator um, groups. So that's what I use in this lab environment. Um, but just um, as a caveat, um, there are multiple ways of setting this up in terms of making sure that it's secure and making sure it's completely um, hardened. But because this is a lab environment, uh, this is how I've got it set up. But it's worth um, reading the documentation, the uh, administrator's guide um, to make sure you understand um, how to set up set this up in a production environment so um, that's good so I'm just going to click OK on there and then I'm just going to show you um, in the Windows um, administrative tools if we go into the local security policy um, and we look at the local policies user right assignments and then we're going to look for the logon as a service um, you can also see that the PanFW admin has been added to this. This is for the user ID agent to run properly. Um, so make sure you've got this set up correctly as well. Um, but that's what you should. Um, that's what you'll need to to successfully uh, complete this lab and get user ID agent up and running. Okay, so from the Windows Server. Um, it would be uh, a good opportunity to test your internet connectivity because you need to head over to support.paloaltonetworks.com um, and log in with your, um, your account. Um, you're going to need an account to be able to download the user ID um, agent. Um, so once you're logged in, uh, you need to go over to the, um, or on the left hand side, there's an update section. And then um, in the drop down list, you're looking for uh, software updates. Uh, and then at the top, then there's a drop down to choose user identification agent. Um, I've already done this, so um, you should be able to easily find the file. Um, if we go into my downloads folder, um, this is the version I'm using. So it's the user agent install 8.1.13-5. So if you download the same one as me, then you shouldn't have any problems. So what you're going to do then once you've downloaded it is just uh, run the, um, the exe and just click next, 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 uh, and then close. Um, it's as simple as that. 
Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the Windows um, icon and then we're going to go to, we're going to search for services and then we're going to click on services and let's open the window up a bit bigger and what we're looking for is the uh, user ID um, service. Uh, there we go. So user ID agent. If we just double click on that, um, it's running at the moment. I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to, and then I'm going to um, use a specific account. Now should be able to use. So if I, if you remember what I said, I used the, the one one account um, for both the agent and the LDAP. So I'm just going to click check names, and it auto populates my Pan FW admin uh, account. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to put my password in. So and then click apply and then OK and then should be able to start that service um, and as long as you're account's got the right privileges um, it should start up fine so that's looking good I can close that window now if I now go and look for the user ID agent um, application and open that up um, we can go to setup um, and I'm gonna edit now I'm just gonna put the same username in there which is uh, pan FW uh, admin and then I'm just going to put the password in again and then click OK uh, and basically that is now waiting for a connection from the firewall and once the firewall once the Palo Alto next generation firewall connects to the agent after we've configured it we should then see um, it, it, it the end of the discovery section we should be able to see the the servers so the firewall in there and itself um, its actual network the, the actual servers um, interfaces and subnets not the actual firewall it's actually the um, the servers information that'd be popular we'll come back to that um, but for the time being we can um, just check that that's running so the agent is running so um, that's all set up ready to go so now it's on to the firewall configuration um, so we can configure the LDAP server profile and the actual user ID um, setup. So let's head over there now. Okay, so we're back at the firewall. Um, let's move on to the LDAP and user ID configuration. So let's click on the device tab and then we can go to the server profile and LDAP um, and then let's click add and give the profile a new name so I'm just going to call it uh, LDAP uh, AD server um, and then add the server's name in here WS lab AD and the IP address uh, 10.4.4.100 and uh, we're going to leave the port at the default 389 configuration in the server settings we're going to use a drop down and go to active directory and the base dn is going to be uh, dc uh, equals uh, mb tech uh, comma dc equal local now this also needs to be changed to whatever your uh, domain is um, click in the blue area because then it, it takes the uh, takes the name I've had it where you put it in and you move to the next white space and, and then it deletes it so just click into the blue area the bind DN is uh, essentially the um, username that we set up earlier so in my case it was pan FW admin um, at MB tech dot local and the password that I used earlier and again and then uncheck require SSL I'm not going to be uh, encrypting the um, user ID communication between 
the firewall and the server in my lab but in production environment this definitely needs to be done um, just to have a look at the pan os administrator guide and have a read through that um, just to make sure that you uh, secure that traffic uh, click ok uh, and then what we can do next is go into user identification and we're going to user id tab uh, or sorry user id agents tab click ads and then we're going to give it the real name of the server again ws uh, lab ad and it's host and port on this and the host ip address is 10.4.4.100 and the default port for the user id agent is 5007 and we're going to use use as ldap proxy make sure that's ticked um, and then click ok uh, we can move on to the group mapping settings and click add and again I'm just going to add the uh, real name um, of the server just for ease I mean you can choose your own naming convention it's just a name um, WS lab AD and then we're going to select the server profile that we just created a few seconds ago um, and then we can go into the group include list and then when this is committed we should see the groups pop up in there it's going to fail at the moment because we haven't committed and then just click OK um, and one final thing we need to do which is really important is go into setup and services and then under service features we go we need to go into the service root configuration now if we just read this service root configuration use management interface for all that means any kind of network service or services that the file is running will all source from the management interface but we don't want that for user id so we're going to customize it and then we're going to look through the list and we're going to be looking for the user id agent click on that and then the source interface is going to be ethernet 1 slash 7 which is what is connected to our server so in the dc zone uh, and um, all communications then will be sourced from the interface IP address 10.4.4.254 and then click OK and then OK and then we can commit to that change. So now that's being committed we can now go and check out the um, status of the LDAP uh, connection or the uh, user ID connection so if we go to user ID and uh, we go to user ID agents you can see now the connection to the um, the Windows server running the user ID, ID agent is now connected because of the green light. If you get anything, uh, a red light, then there's something wrong. Check your Windows firewall, uh, check that you've got your username and password correct, all those normal troubleshooting steps. But if you have followed along what I've done in the lab, you, you should get a green light. So ultimately that's, um, that's, that's connected. And if we go back into uh, group mapping settings and click on the name, and then go to the group include list we should now get a list of all the um, the active directory groups um, i'm going to add the domain users in, in into the included groups box on the right hand side um, this then will be available in security policy um, and any users that are in this group will show up as source users in the rule base so in the security policies which then you can um, be very granular um, with your security policies so i'm going to click ok um, i'm going to commit that so uh, while that's doing that, i'm just going to pop over to the windows 10 machine um, sorry no the windows uh, 2016 machine um, and i'm going to log back in Just going to show you that I've got a, a test account set up. Uh, so I've got Tony Stark. He's now part of the uh, the uh, the lab setup. Um, he's just a domain user. So I'm going to uh, log in with Tony Stark um, on the Windows 10 machine, and then hopefully we should be able to see um, Tony Stark of um, show up in the logs. 
and we should be able to then create a policy to um, to enforce some sort of security, uh, you know, permit or deny uh, Tony Stark on, on which applications or what uh, what he's allowed to do, basically. So I'm just going to log in. So he's successfully logged in, um, and we should be able to um, open up um, a browser and go to Google and go to BBC News. So we know that's working from that user. Now if we go back to the firewall, uh, we should go be able to go to the monitor tab and, and then now if we see we have now got user ID working we can see that Tony Stark has logged in and is currently accessing the internet through the firewall so if we wanted to create a policy we could simply click add and we could say block Facebook and then we could then source it from the user zone and now we have the option to select a user um, and we can go in here um, but we could then be very granular and then add um, T Stark as a source user destination to the untrust application we could now block Facebook so Facebook base application default actions and then we're going to block him or deny him and then click OK now we'll move that one up to the top and then we're going to commit so that's now committed successfully if we go back to the windows 10 machine um, we go to facebook and let's do it through google and if we go to facebook and try and log in can't connect and if we go back to the firewall logs and filter just on Tony. You can see there, he's tried to log into Facebook, but it's been denied. So that that is now a completed user ID installation. Um, it's working properly, as you can see. Uh, I hope this has been useful uh, and you found it interesting. Um, if you've got any comments, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you like the video, please uh, subscribe um, I'll be making more videos um, about Palo Alto next generation firewalls going forward thanks very much and see you soon bye bye okay guys that's it for today's video thanks for watching over the next coming weeks I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them if you like this video I'm sure you know what to do by now but just in case you don't Please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.